Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, this is going to be the monograph video. So this is kind of the third video in the pad portfolio um, sort of series of things. Um, so this is going to focus on monographs. So you only really need to watch this video if you specifically want some help with monographs or even you just want a bit of a recap on what monographs are and what we're kind of using them for in this process. So there's four main things that we're going to go through in this sort of video today. Um, number one, we're going to look at what monographs you need to complete. So I'm just going to show you where to find these and the indications that go along with those specific drugs. They're going to have a look at the monograph folder itself, show what's available to you there already, and then we'll have a look at what's useful to you moving forward. We'll have a talk through the template. So I'll take you through the template, not with an example, because you have a couple of examples there already, but I'll take you through the types of information that I'm looking for and maybe a few tips that I would have from what I've seen students sort of produce over the last few years. So again, some quick tips in terms of the simple mistakes that people generally make um, and what I kind of expect when it comes to sort of assessment times. Uh, finally, we'll have a look at very quickly next year's monographs. I'm not going to go through them. I don't expect you to even start thinking about them just yet, um, but I'll show you what's expected of you when you come to part two. Okay, so we're going to start by switching to uh, my screen and I'm going to take you through Blackboard a little bit and then we'll switch to the template itself and going through my expectations. So as usual, I'll take you to Blackboard and I'll show you where everything is uh, and then where all the important information and how you can kind of use it. So uh, hopefully you probably know where all this information is already, but it's always worthwhile going through. So go to your student development portfolio. Okay, I'm just going to switch into student mode just so I see exactly what you guys see. So you'll obviously go to part one, pharmacy students. Now the monographs are all located within clinical knowledge. Okay, so because basically the information on the drugs is very applicable clinically um, and it's a good mixture of practice, pharmaceutics and pharmacology. So there's lots of important information clinically about the drugs that we're dealing with. So if you click in here, so there's important or some different sources here to use, but probably most importantly is your minimum requirements that are at the top here. So these are your minimum requirements for part one. So I'd expect five monographs by the time that you start part two. Now within that list, you have obviously the names of each of the drugs. Now these have been selected because they are common drugs that you're going to come across you know, throughout your career. Um, they're ones you're likely to have heard of before as well. So hopefully they're not completely new. And again, we build up the complexity a little bit throughout the years. Um, so these are some nice, straightforward examples of drugs that you will come across and maybe expected to count your patients on. So that's why we've kind of selected them. And they kind of fit in with some of the other parts you've been learning on the course so far. So hopefully these aren't completely new to you. So you obviously have the names of each of the drugs. So we've got aspirin, cetirizine, fluconazole, hydrocortisone and paracetamol. And the next thing, we've got the indications that we want the monograph to be focused on. The reason why we've done this is that obviously some drugs have got loads of different indications that are quite different from each other. Um, and obviously that would mean a monograph could be com very complicated because um, you could be writing mechanisms of action based on you know, how it's activity against a variety of conditions. So we've tried to tailor it to what the key or main conditions are that you're likely to interact the drug with in that respect. So for instance, for aspirin, main indications for aspirin that you'll be dealing with will be its properties in terms of dealing with pain and its property of being an antiplatelet drug. So when you're actually writing a monograph, and I'll talk a little bit more about this when we go through a sort of blank example, um, you only need to include formulations that are relevant to these conditions. OK, so I don't need you to write about every formulation that's possible. I'd only require you to write um, the monograph based on aspirin being used for pain, for pain and as an antiplatelet drug. Um, so, for instance, for things like hydrocortisone, where I've given you um, eczema, bites and stings, um, obviously for something like that, we'll be dealing with a cream and potentially tablets here for the bites. Um, but it just means that when you're writing that monograph, you need to make sure that you're mentioning or you're writing it from a perspective of that it's a cream and or other formulation. But you won't have to include all of them. Um, that will become a little bit clear, clearer as we move on. 
Obviously, down from here, you've got the monograph workshop that Dr. Brazier gave you. So you've got both the slides and you've got an audio recording as well. So you've got that to reflect back on if you need it. Um, within that uh, session or within that workshop, there were a couple of examples that you're either given in advance or you actually went through in that session. So actually two of the monographs you should have completed already. Um, I don't expect you to go back and rewrite them, okay? As long as they follow a similar pattern, they should be pretty much ready to go, all right? So steroidine, paracetamol, so if you want to have a look at those examples, so if we go into, into steroidine, for example, um, you've got the blank one with missing information that you did in the session, and then here is the completed one, which you can pretty much um, put straight into your uh, folders. Obviously, hopefully you've written your own, but this will at least be able to allow you to check the information is correct. So from that point of view, I'm just going to run through sort of a blank template and just talk you through what I kind of expect, any of the kind of key mistakes that people make quite commonly, and hopefully clear up any sort of uh, confusion you might have about the different sections. So if you bear with me one second, just where I open the template. Okay, so we'll be down here in the blank monograph. Which is just taking its time. Okay. It's extremely hot today, so I think even words are suffering being running on my computer, but it will get there. So let's dive into the monograph itself. Let's just zoom in a little bit so it's a little bit bigger for you. So the key piece of information, obviously, number one, you must include the name of the drug. I think that probably goes without saying that whatever the monograph is, you need to tell me what it is. Um, include brand names here if there are common brands um, associated with the drug. I don't expect you to write every brand name that's out there. Just give me some examples of the types of brands. Obviously, you'll find them in the BNF, so they should be super easy to find. Chemical structure, as you've been shown in the examples you did with Dr. Brazier, um, you should have the chemical drug structure of the drug itself. Now, where people generally go a little bit wrong here is, ideally, I'd like you to draw them all from scratch using ChemDraw. I know there have, um, Dr. Hall did a kind of session on how to use ChemDraw, which is a, a program where you're able to draw molecular structures yourselves. Um, I know not everyone's super confident in using that. So you can get pictures off the net, um, which is fine. Uh, I just try and stick to a sort of common theme in terms of their style. So actually Wikipedia is pretty good with their images uh, in terms of quality, but just make sure that, you know, they seem fairly similar across all the monographs you're going to draw, um, produce in terms of their sort of style. Um, one thing to note, please don't squash your images um, because obviously that changes all the bond angles uh, and try not to uh, sort of doctor things uh, too much in terms of colour or anything else. Um, so try and make sure you think about actually you're trying to have a, a good representation of the chemical um, in this structure here. Also try and make sure the size is as big as it can be so it's easy for me to see where things are. And number one, it has to be easy for you to interpret later on. So help yourself out there and make it as big as you can in terms of the size you're given. Physical chemical properties is normally fairly straightforward, so hopefully you know where to find this type of information. Um, it should all be accessible through Drug Bank or, um, I've forgotten the other one now, EMC. So most of this information is in there. I don't expect you to be looking at other sources particularly. Um, it should all be in there. Things like functional groups, you'll be able to list some of them yourself, um, but even things like EMC, I think, lists some of the functional groups. Now, if you're writing the functional groups down here, just make sure you know where they are on the structure, because actually the main way that we assess these monographs is not by me marking them as sort of individual assignments, is we're testing them in that Viva station. So actually, a question could be, you know, can you tell me what functional groups there are in the molecule, and can you show me where they are? So actually just having a list of them might not be fully helpful if you're not sure where they are. So make sure it's written in a way that you understand where they are. But again, just data in here, 
list the key main functional groups and make sure you sort of have an understanding of where they are. This kind of bigger section here is all about sort of dosage forms and administration. Now remember when I said I want you to only focus on the dosage forms relevant to the indication I'd given um, and this kind of comes in key here so please only include the dosage form that's relevant for that indication. So for instance for paracetamol for sort of pain I'd expect you to write tablets, suspensions, um, but I wouldn't necessarily expect you to go into things like injections, which paracetamol does come as. Um, so stick to the sort of common dosage forms that you'll have for that indication. Now one that was probably missing in Dr. Brazier's um, examples was excipients. Now we don't actually talk about excipients until year two really, in reality, um, which is why it's not on that original template. So for your part one Monographs don't worry about excipients too much. So excipients are just all the other ingredients that go into the formulation um, that make, say, in your tablet, obviously you've got your drug itself, but you've got lots of other things that actually make it a tablet or bulk it out. So this is only really relevant from looking at part two onwards. Um, administration routes, so oral routes, topical routes, um, everything like that, detail it there. There's something that says rationale here. So just if there's a particular reason it's formulated in a particular way, Put a bit of a um, information there if you want to. I always put that as kind of as optional because some is very straightforward. But if something's formulated specifically as a nasal spray, for instance, you might want to say why a nasal spray is suitable for this particular indication of this drug. So moving down to activity of drug, um, I would just expect you to put the drug class that is in the BNF in reality. So just find its kind of uh, drug class from that. I know in the examples they've broken it down even further than that, but go with our BNF classes. That's kind of what I would expect from you guys in terms of that. Indication. So obviously you've kind of been given the indication, um, but if it's any more specific uh, in the BNF, you can write down a more specific indication. Again, if it's pain was the sort of overall um, indication given um, in the list, you still might want to break that down if there are different types of pain that are useful for this formulation or drug type. Interactions also go in here. Um, again, I don't expect you to write every interaction there is for some of these drugs because some of them have tens and tens of interactions. Um, so I just want you to keep it to either the severe interactions and possibly a few of the common ones um, or ones with common drugs that you're familiar with. So just give me some examples. Obviously, just to say in either, you can potentially put this in either of these two sections, um, I would expect you to put a um, mechanism of action. So write it in a way that makes sense to you. Um, write it in enough detail that you could explain it to someone else. And quite often find that students kind of not directly copy and paste from some slightly more complex sources. So even from the EMC, sometimes it's not written in a particularly nice way. So just make sure if you are copying anything in, that your it makes sense to you and you can rephrase things that make it clearer to you because remember these monographs are to be used by you in that viva station um, so they can be tailored to what your needs are in terms of that a couple of values here that you may be able to find now this information isn't always available for all drugs so again check um, drug bank and the emc if it's not in there and it's not being sort of clearly specified in any other primary sources um, you can just leave this as NA. Um, for lots of them, those values are there. Um, but I'm not too worried if you're not able to find them at this stage. Um, again, I don't expect you to spend loads of time looking for these values because actually these values aren't, they're sometimes quite variable between sources and actually the value is not always that important in terms of um, the kind of knowledge that we want you to have in terms of its application. Kind of what's key is, I suppose, is that you know what these two values are and you know what, say, a high LD50 value differs from a low LD50 value. So that's why we like you to put these values in if you can have access to them, because it gives you some sort of context for what these mean. The sort of last main section is about patient advice. So any specific administration instruction, instructions even, um, warnings, common and important side effects. Again, do not include every side effect. Some drugs have got absolutely loads. So just what you either classes 
common or key side effects you would want a patient to know about. Because remember, when you're counselling a patient, you never go through the full list of side effects. You're only restricted to what you deem as being a common or important side effect. So that should reflect that in terms of here. Um, administration instructions, again, don't put down every administration um, dosage form, dosage available. Put down the common ones for your indication that you've been given in the list. Okay, so again, hope that cuts down a little bit in terms of the amount that you're having to sort of uh, include in these monographs. A few last values down the bottom. Now, again, you'll probably know where to find these, but the BNF is probably the best source for these. Um, so some use in pregnancy, use in renal impairment, and use in hepatic impairment. So again, just looking at actually are these drugs um, affected by these particular impairments or can we use it safely if our patient is pregnant or breastfeeding? Because that's important in terms of the advice we'd give out. Obviously, make sure that you write yourself down as the author and please date it on the date that you wrote it. Okay, so for this one, obviously, you've got five monographs to complete. Two of them are pretty much done for you already. So really do focus on those three new ones that you'll be looking at for the first time. If you're interested, I will just show you what is ahead or what you have in store for year two. So you can view these already and the monographs aren't going to change. Um, so though I wouldn't, I don't particularly expect you to look at these or I, I really don't want you to start working on these unless you really, really want to. Um, you can have a look at part two. The main difference for part two is that the list is a bit longer. Um, they're much more specific to the types of sections that you're learning about in part two. So we've got drugs relating to cardiovascular system, respiratory. Um, we've got another cardiovascular. You're going to see some themes of cardiovascular next year. Um, and we've got respiratory again. This one's related to bones. And again, coagulation, you'll sort of see um, you have specific sessions relating to warfarin as well. So actually, it's probably not best to attack these until next year but there are some parts you could do if you're desperate to obviously there are 10 because you can pretty much start them straight away whereas in part one we don't really introduce the monographs till quite late on in the term so that's my kind of run through for monographs if you have specific questions again you can either use the padlet which i'll try and pick up or please email me um, we will have sessions throughout the next couple of years so if you have any specific problems or questions related to the monographs there are sessions dedicated to those, um, but please have a go. Um, the information you learn in those monographs is kind of invaluable for you in, you know, from PAM sessions to specific lectures to OSCEs and everything else. So actually starting to learn about these in that kind of depth is really, really helpful for you moving forward. So that's all I had to go through in this session. So a little bit of a shorter one possibly um, than my other ones. So we've got a couple of sections still to look at. So possibly I'll see you next time when we're going to deal with um, the certificate in business administration. And then the final one will be on actually completing and uploading your um, portfolio of uh, documents online. So possibly see you back for those. Please view this video and the other th uh, two videos just to try and give you that good grounding in terms of what's expected. OK, so that's it from me. So until the next time, I will see you guys later. Thank you.